Hi friends, welcome to San Antonio Sports Motivation Monday. I am Mandy Adkins and today we're going to be visiting with Annie Chandler Grievers and her husband Matt and sweet little Gracie is joining us. Um, for those of you who may not know Annie, um, Annie is the most decorated female swimmer in San Antonio history. Um, she was a three-time state champion at Churchill High School in the 100-yard breaststroke, a member of two state championship relay teams in 2005. She led Churchill to the Texas 5A state championship title. She held the state record in breaststroke until 2018. And at the University of Arizona, Chandler was named was a member of the 2008 NCAA championship team and an 18-time All-American. She was a member of the USA national swim team from 2010 to 2012, and she was inducted into the San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame in 2017. And so after receiving a romantic proposal from her fellow national swim team member that went viral, Annie and married Matt Grievers in 2013. And Matt is a two-time Olympian and six-time Olympic medalist in Beijing and London. He has four gold and two silver. And he was training for his third Olympic team in 2020 before the pandemic um, kind of put all that on hold or kind of paused that. And so Matt and Annie have two children, Skylar Lee, who is three, and Barbara Grace, Gracie, who's with us today, um, and she was born in September. So Annie and Matt, we're so glad to have you. Thank you for joining us. Thrilled to be with you. Thanks, Thanks for having us. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about, um, you know, San Antonio Sports, when the pandemic happened, we looked for ways that we could help serve our community. And one of those was we created online fitness programming and virtual programming since all of our in-person programming was halted. And so we know that health and fitness are critical um, and a really important factor in terms of mental health. And so we've tried to just bring all of our resources together to create an opportunity for families to stay fit while they're staying at home. And one of those has been kind of our Motivation Monday series and hearing from other people about how they're staying motivated in the midst of all the unknown um, so tell us a little bit about how you all have stayed fit during the shutdown. Sure. Uh, I think I started off because I was very scheduled and regimented. Actually, during the beginning of the pandemic, I was in Colorado Springs at the Olympic Training Center. Uh, so I was, I was in the hardest training you could, you could imagine and very scheduled and uh, really the highest level with um, the best nutrition and recovery tools and massage therapists and everything was there. And so to come back from that, I actually drove back because it was starting to get uh, a little scarier. And I kind of at that point needed to just have sporadic training. What I mean by that is I just uh, would do push ups, like 20 push ups at a time throughout the day and try to get to over 100. And there's a bench that I have, and I just try to get to 100 curls. I don't know if we have a swing set set up, but I'll try to do like pull-ups throughout the day. So it wasn't scheduled. I just wanted to kind of enjoy the freedom that was kind of forced on us in terms of everything being shut down and just being trying to work out in our house. Uh, and it was, it was nice just kind of stay fit um, without being so scheduled or regimented. Fast forward a few months. Now I need a schedule. <laughs> <laughs> and now I need someone to tell me what to do. It's much easier to have at least a goal or an objective. Uh, and I found if it was fully up to me, though that worked in the beginning, it's now, uh, it doesn't work as well because it's easier to take a shortcut when, when you have your own schedule. You're like, did I say 100 push-ups? I'm at 80. <laughs> or it's, uh, or eights. No, it's, <laughs> it's um, different for everyone. So I think your program is great and, and to give someone a carrot and what to, what to do. And it's sometimes easier, especially when it comes to physical fitness, to, to have someone tell you and, and design something for you that you can uh, 
have that care for and you don't just get stop when you're tired uh, something to kind of push past and so that's kind of been the evolution of my training is wanting to just uh stay in shape and now i'm kind of craving that structure and uh and trying to get it we're actually um pretty close down here we're in tucson arizona right now we're we're pretty shut down so it's uh no pools no gyms so we're uh figuring out stuff at home and uh, just trying to, we have a bike, an indoor bike, so we've been doing that a lot. Um, but yeah, I think everyone's found their own struggles throughout this and different ways to adapt. So it's, it's always interesting to hear different ways. And I think, well, for me, you have a child and you know that postpartum months, <laughs> you're eager to feel like yourself again. So pretty much this hit in March when Gracie was four months old and I had made a pact with myself that I was going to join a gym when she was six months and could go to the gym childcare. And of course, that is not an option right now. Right. So that I, I was kind of deflated in the beginning. And we'll talk more about motivation later. But that's uh, the Peloton. Our bike has been my main form of exercise. And uh, but like Matt said, it's pretty easy in the beginning I was I was telling him that I wanted a routine he was like let's enjoy not having one for a while and I agreed with that and now we're both pretty um pretty ready to have some structure yeah yeah I can imagine it's as like you said as a parent myself like we have a toddler at home that's 17 months old and so it's hard for everybody to stay active and it's hard for everybody to be home but then when you add little ones on top of that, not only are you home, but you've also got to juggle more schedules and more routine. And um, it's hard to find the time and stay motivated. Right. Um, so kind of going off of that, for each of you, what has the relationship between physical activity and mental health looked like for you all? I'll, I'll start on this one. Yeah. I think well, they go hand in hand, and I think one of the major pros of being an athlete for so long is you know the massive reward, the endorphin rush that comes with working out really hard, and just the satisfaction, and just the oxygenation. You just feel refreshed after you get your blood flowing like that. So I think I have always... Like once you're again in some sort of routine, you crave that. And just like everybody else, I think pro athletes who don't have a place to train or former good athletes, <laughs> that's what I am, uh, who don't have a routine, it's, uh, it's, it's hard to, or it's easy to get out of or to forget what that reward feels like. And then once you get back into it, once I do a hard ride on the bike, I'm like, yes, this is why I do this. Because you do, it's, it offers immediate clarity of mind to me. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I'm more patient with the girls and Matt. <laughs> I'm a more pleasant person when I work out. And I know most of us could say that if we're being honest. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely agree. The endorphin rush is a hard thing to explain to people that don't feel it but um i get hit pretty hard after physical activity that i i feel good um just that's natural you know i get it after a real hard workout and uh you kind of forget about that until just after doing it um annie would definitely say i'm a better person after working out i this isn't for everyone but um working out is a nice time just for for me i know uh, not everyone has that situation where they can kind of forget their kids for 30 minutes or an hour or whatever it is. But uh, I feel like when you are a parent, especially, or just different um, circumstances that, that are going on, especially now, you have little time just for yourself, mm -hmm. maybe. Um, and so it's my time to just focus on me and it's pretty nice uh, yeah. to just uh, have, yeah, 30 for, for self-improvement instead of family improvement, which is great too, but it's, uh, something I've done for a very long time that was my profession is just kind of being selfish and how can I be the best swimmer I can be and so it's really nice to for for the rest of my life I'm going to need that moment just to kind of identify what I need to prove on improve on just for myself and, uh, and then yeah there's just obviously physical or 
chemical changes going on with the body that uh, that are happening. And for me, I get a lot more energy. It doesn't make sense, right? You're like, oh, I just worked out really hard. I just gave a lot of energy, but that's how you get energy for me. And so when I'm really tired, I don't want to work out, but that's going to be the best thing for me to get the right. energy. And uh, yeah. And something unique about swimmers that Matt and I have spoken about is we're used to quiet. Like you're underwater when you're training. And I think being around kids all the time, like our kids or other people's kids, it can just be volume that goes with that can be exhausting. So what Matt's saying is true. Like he's really used to that sanctuary of the pool of silence and being able to just completely, you know, plug out of the world that way is, um, it, it becomes a need when you're so acquainted with that feeling. So I guess I, I've been out of the water for long enough now that I am more used to it. But I think that's that's a hard transition out of swimming for sure. Right. Yeah, that's so true. I never thought of that. But as I find myself just as a parent now the volume level in my house is so much higher than I was used to prior. And so I can only imagine the transition from kind of that swimming lifestyle when it is. It's real quiet and and I think that's important for parents too. You all bring such a great perspective as um, a young family and parents of two little ones that, you know, if you have the opportunity to get out for even 20 or 30 minutes just for a quick walk by yourself after bedtime or, you know, at some point, take advantage of that. And, and it's okay to feel a little selfish and take care of yourself because then you're a better mom, a better dad, a better sibling or, pa you know, better parent for everybody in your house. Um, if you take those few minutes, if you're given them to kind of do some silent exercise by yourself. So, well, Matt, I'm sure that you're disappointed, obviously, that the Olympics were postponed. Um, and it seems like there's a lot of uncertainty surrounding the games. So tell us a little bit about how do you deal with that, both in terms of training and what that means for your career? Uh, so my career is extended. <laughs> <laughs> um, not saying I would have retired after this year, guaranteed anyway. I keep surprising myself with my performance level at my age, uh, which isn't, I'm, I'm 20 or 35, 35, <laughs> 35, which is old for older for swimming. Um, and I'm still competitive, but still um, making the, the team almost every year, went to Worlds last year. So uh, that's, that's great. So I kind of like, I like it because I don't know what else I'm going to do in this world, I'm going to be as good as I am <laughs> at swimming, so I'm kind of holding on. Um, but it's it was pretty disappointing because swimming, there's cycles. Uh, you have a four-year cycle. That's every Olympics is every four years. And then within that, you have training cycles. And I was hitting a really hard training cycle, and I kept saying, all right, this is the last one. I really had to hit this hard. Like, and I was saying that a lot of days, like, to push myself through these pain barriers and then uh, to kind of have it called off through – you're like all that work, all that pain <laughs> kind of uh, went away, but it's, it wasn't for nothing. I think I, I'll still uh, gain some benefit even a year later, hopefully from some of that workload, but it, it is mentally very difficult to get back into it the same way with the uncertainty. You're saying the uncertainty. I, uh, right. I think the motivation question will probably be next in terms of how do you stay motivated for this? Well, I think at my age again, and I think some people, anyone can identify with this at all ages, but I have a certain amount of matches of motivation to light the fire. And uh, I think I have only a few matches left and I don't want to strike them too early. So when you're saying, what am I doing now? Well, I'm just trying to stay in shape, um, working out, trying to swim as much as I can. Right now, I actually don't have any pools as of today again um, that I know of. And, uh, and not being anxious about that, um, believing in, in God's plan there. And just, uh, yeah, just, again, just trying to not <laughs> get out of shape, but not try to get better. And then wait for the moment that there is certainty to, to strike one of those matches, one of the few remaining, and, and turn it up. I think that's important for a lot of people in a lot of different situations. 
uh, to not just go full steam when they don't have the goal because uh, I've talked about it a lot at clinics I do, uh, especially for age groupers, a lot of people get the quits. They want to kind of, they go really hard into something and then it's not fun and it's more of a job than mm -hmm. the sport or the, where they find the joy out of it. I think it's important, especially now when things are really out of your control, is to maintain your joy if you can and uh, try to try to coast as much as you can while, uh, and no matter what, whatever you're doing physically, because um, it's harder, if you get out of shape, it's hard to get in shape. So you gotta hold, hold on there uh, to not fall off the mountain, but um, yeah, I, I think it's 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 really hard right now to to go full steam. Yeah, that I appreciate. Let's go. I, <laughs> no, I was gonna say I, I appreciate your transparency though and your honesty because I think you know a lot of times we're like, you know, cute, you know, super positive and obviously you know super motivating, but it's also good to hear somebody say you know you got to take it one day at a time and you can't. You know, burnout is a real thing and you can't go a hundred miles per hour for a whole year. And so I appreciate that. So, so yeah, you kind of hit the nail on the head and kind of going off of that, um, for both of you, do you have any tips, other tips or suggestions on, you know, how you stay motivated? Goals, goals, uh, for me, sorry. I, yeah. It's, uh, I, I, a few weeks ago, I did a Peloton, or months ago, I guess now, a Peloton competition, and it was cool if, uh, you golf fans out there, it's against some pretty good golfers, um, Justin Thomas, and Rory McIlroy, and Bubba Watson were in it, and Gordon Hayward, and some football players as well, I'm sorry if I, if anyone watches this and they're forgetting me, um, but it was a competition. It was something that I could focus on and finally have like a goal that was like a carrot that was close. And uh, it was so fun again to be on the bike. It wasn't just getting in the miles. It was, okay, mm -hmm. I have a purpose. And the purpose is, makes everything more enjoyable. You, you can push harder. So for me to stay motivated is finding your purpose, finding your motivation. Well, that is purpose and then your goal for me. My answer is different because I'm not a professional athlete and I'm not a professional racer. So going back to mental health, I would say that is my motivation now. I'm not really, I mean, yeah, I would like to look good. Like <laughs> that's part of the motivation, but I would say my main motivation is just the mental benefits that come with exercising and just how good I feel, just that clarity that I feel after I exercise. Mm -hmm. And it is, it's almost a nostalgic feeling every time I exercise because it was such a large part of my life for so much of my life. Yeah. And now that I, I don't get it every day and it's not because I couldn't, like, I think we could orchestrate it so I could work out every day, but I'm not in great shape. <laughs> I'll just be transparent. Yeah. So I probably work out like four times a week on the bike or around there. And I think that's pretty manageable for me right now and yeah. once there's more certainty and there's more windows of time where like once Skylar's back in preschool and there's just more of the structure I think I'll try to do more but for now I think going back to what Matt was saying you don't need to feel bad about not trying to be your personal best in such a weird time such a weird time in the world and so I think being able to maintain what you had before or if it is a great time for some people without kids probably <laughs> without small children <laughs> to get into maybe the best shape of their life but yes. I think for us it's it's a lot different yeah yeah I'm right there with you the the pandemic is not when I'm going to reach all my fitness goals but yeah, yeah. that's okay we'll just okay do the best we can and yeah, right. yeah i've started i've attempted to do a few zumba classes with our toddler and oh, it's fun. it's interesting yeah but good idea 
Um, well, can you share some of your thoughts on the San Antonio Sports Stay Active, Stay Healthy campaign and why it's so important for folks to have access to that? I think similar to what I was just saying is the structure is nice. Having goals, um, having a plan and someone to do it uh, maybe with is, is so nice. It's so much easier um, to, to follow structure when, we're, especially right now when we're not, some people are not very structured, it's, it's nice. And maybe it sounds uh, harder, but it's, it's exactly what I need right now is, is some, something uh, that someone else has thought of that I should do. And it's, it's nice because everything's just been on uh, the individual for a while. And so now to, or this is, is a nice opportunity for uh, people to, to reach out and do other programs. And we're just talking about earlier, both Annie and I said, we have such a good, strong connection between physical health and mental health, the exercise and, and being positive. So I think everyone that can kind of experience that uh, especially newer people to exercise experiencing that and then hopefully getting uh, kind of addicted to it because it is it's, it's a good it's a good feeling after working out so I think it's a great program to get people to try and, and have some structure and yeah it's great and I like so I'm new to I was just reading about all of the programming but I like how there's something for everyone there's something for seniors and for weekend warriors or for the pro athlete even I mean I'm interested in trying the 12 week is it called warrior yeah the alpha warrior challenge alpha warrior challenge and then the the kids stuff is great too because just how many times have they been without like soccer practice or at least team sports that they they and their parents bank on to get their energy out and yes just to have other ways to be able to practice their sport while at home and I think it's ingenious and the incentive to have the gift cards and earn tickets, and I like it all. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a big well, fan. Thank you. It's been a lot of fun to, to put together, and um, yeah, it's we're hopeful that the community is um, is able to continue to use it as a resource. And um, so, kind of closing us out, have the two of you found any silver linings um, from the past few months? Yeah, we, we, this is such a magical time to spend with our girls. Um, it's, you know, some people, and it, it might be a little too much time, <laughs> so, but it is it is pretty special. Uh, we both, we like take turns napping with Skylar in her nap time, and it's awesome. Uh, I don't know, many people probably would have thought that's possible. Um, so there's, there's a lot of great things, and just growing as a family, and it's a lot of time together. I think it's kind of ages your relationship. Spending uh, four months in quarantine Sorry, with sure. each other is like four years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's 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 great. And for me, um, another year of swimming is is nice, no matter what. And yeah, there's there's more that I'm forgetting, but there's there's a lot of uh, so a lot of home life. improvement projects. That's right. Yes. DIY opportunities. Uh -huh. <laughs> Um, yeah, I found myself either since we're spending so much concentrated time at home, I'm either thinking, how can we change this room or should we move? Like, <laughs> <laughs> those are our options. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I think, I think the family time has been really a huge blessing and we have been it spoiled with that even before Matt's training got shut down. So I don't know what I'm going to do when he goes back to being gone for four hours a day, which is not that much, but that's, uh, that's our life normally. So I guess we, we must get along pretty well because we can bear each other's company so long. <laughs> In our family, not here too. It's just FaceTime, technology, being on Zoom. Uh, it's really nice to connect with friends that maybe we haven't had time for to connect with. And uh, yeah, it's connection. The relationships have, have been uh, re-strengthened, um, both family and friends. So that's definitely been great. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've FaceTimed all of all four grandparents are in Virginia, and so I think we've spent more FaceTime time during this pandemic than we have in our life. Uh, but it's such a blessing to to be able to connect with people that way and. And same for us. I mean, we've said we 
we will never again get this amount of time at home with our little one as a family. And so, you know, some days are easier than others, but it's definitely been such a blessing. Well, Annie and Matt, we really appreciate both of you taking time to tonight to talk with us and share with us your experience. And um, for any of you who are watching who are not familiar with San Antonio Sports Stay Active, Stay Healthy campaign, I encourage you to visit sanantoniosports.org and find these great community resources that we're talking about and um, something that you can use to start your fitness journey and set your goals. So until next time, everybody stay active, stay healthy, and we'll see you again soon. Okay. Hi. We, we are no